Good evening. Welcome to WSBI, your resource for success podcast program, where you get to meet inspiring women-owned businesses from across the country. And now for your host, Kimberly McElmore. All right, good evening and welcome to WSBI, your resource for success podcast program where you get to meet inspiring entrepreneurs and women-owned businesses from across the country. I am your host, Kimberly McLemore, and welcome to a special edition of the show. With us, we have Fidel Espinosa, the founder and principal partner at Invictus Advisors. Invictus Advisors is a binational consulting firm whose mission is to be a strategic partner for business owners to make better financial decisions. Managing a portfolio of over 100 clients with total assets over $10 million, he has led the organization to open multiple offices throughout the United States and Mexico while increasing the annual budget from $25,000 to $1 million in just three years. As a self-made author, entrepreneur, and business owner, he understands what it takes to start and run a business effectively. Some of his most recent accomplishments include member of the Forbes Financial Council, San Diego, best accounting firm designated by the San Diego Union Tribune, financial executive on Frontier Newspaper Editorial Committee, finance, finance finalist as the CFO of the Year Awards by San Diego Business Journal, just to name a few. He also is an Amazon best-selling author. Books include Help, The IRS Is After Me, What Do I Do? And Help, I Want to Be a Real Estate Investor, What Do I Do? So without further ado, please help me welcome to my platform, my special guest, Fidel Espinosa. Hey, Fidel, how are you? Hi, how are you? Good evening to you guys um, at the East Coast. We are in the uh, uh, West Coast. We are in San Diego. (laughs) Yes, yes, where it's still nice and and sunny and bright, right? And don't have to worry about all the other things that are going on in the background right that's awesome uh, so. i know it's been it's been a, a a little bit of overcast day but nevertheless warm yes well here it's been just warm and rainy today has just been kind of an ugly ugly rainy day and i think we're supposed to get a little more tonight but it, at least it's warm so i guess you know i'm trying not to complain too much because there's so many other <laughs> other craziness going on around the world as we know of, and we'll speak a little bit more on that. But Fidel, why don't you just tell my listeners a little bit more about who you are, besides what I've already read personally. We'd like to know a little bit more about you. Well, uh, I'm Vidal Espinosa, and um, I was born in San Diego, but I was raised in Tijuana, Mexico, which is a border town to to San Diego. Uh, I I lived all my life in this area. I went to school um, here in Tijuana, and I did my university in Mexico City. And then I did my master's in Loyola University. And uh, I decided to stay here in in the area and help small businesses uh, grow. I've been an entrepreneur all my life, I actually can remember that uh, I used to lease uh, magazines to my grandma's neighbors. I used to go around the block and renting uh, the magazines that she had left or finished reading mm-hmm. to them for a quarter, for one quarter <laughs> a day. Wow. So I was the, the local magazine blockbuster uh, <laughs> store, and I had a special delivery and then my grandma used to make me lemonade to sell up at the at the at the sidewalk Mm -hmm. and one day i remember that i saw a lady walking in front with a a lollipop an ice cream uh uh, uh, an ice cream Mm -hmm. so i decided to go and buy all the ice cream from the neighborhood uh pharmacy Mm -hmm. And I sold it at the same price that I bought them, but at least I was selling something. Right. Wow. So yeah. you're. So I've I'm been sorry. An entrepreneur ahead. all my life. Yes, I was going to say. I've been an were, entrepreneur all my life. Absolutely, I was going to say you're definitely an entrepreneur to the heart. <laughs> I mean, from from yeah. the get go, that's you thought about making money and figuring out how it all works, you know, and that's pretty neat. I love the the ordeal of you taking the magazines and selling them after people read them and, and renting them out or selling them for a quarter. Now that's pretty, pretty neat concept. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I think it's in my blood because both mm-hmm. uh, sides of the family, 
uh, they've been entrepreneurs. My dad was an entrepreneur, my grandfather, all of them. Like, so mm-hmm. I think it runs in my DNA. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with that, with that statement. Absolutely. So your journey started out very young. But when did, yeah. I guess, let me just say, who else actually inspired you? Um, you know, you said your family was a big part of it, but it sounds like your grandmother was also a huge part of what you were doing. But what else really else expired, inspired you to decide to be that true business entrepreneur that you wanted to be, become? Uh, me, well, when I was, uh, my dad passed away when I was 11. Mm-hmm. So... Um, the, the memories were kept alive by my mom and my grandma from my mom's side. So I think one of my, uh, biggest, um, motivators has been my mother who I sometimes, sometimes I listen to her, mm-hmm. <laughs> but most of the times or most, one of the, most of the wisest advice that I've ever listened to and actually taking action upon them has been from her. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she basically, I don't know if it's from her or from, but she always starts by saying, your dad used to say this, or your dad used to do this. Mm-hmm. So so that's that's where it started. Wow. Yeah. And, and you know, it's, I'd love that, you know, your, your mother and your grandmother were both that continued inspiration after your father had passed and you continue to live the legacy, um, you know, within your family. And that's the beauty of it. The thing that, you know, really stands out to me is that you obviously love being an entrepreneur. And with that love that you have, you've shared your your enjoyment of entrepreneurism and with people outside, obviously, uh, from your helping them grow their businesses. So talk a little bit about that love of um, making people understanding how to make better financial decisions for their businesses. Well, it all starts with knowing your numbers. And if you don't, if you don't know your numbers, you're actually really screwed. Mm -hmm. Sorry, the the language. Mm -hmm. But if, if you are just navigating in your business, just through, oh, let me see where the wind is blowing. That's it. You're done. You either just close down or actually get the guts to know your numbers. That's where it all starts. Mm-hmm. Your business model could be amazing. Your product could be supreme. Your delivery could be one of the best ones in the world. The added value should, it could be the best of the best. You could be the Nordstrom's of your industry. But if you don't know your numbers, as we say internally, you're broke and you don't even know it. Mm-hmm. And I agree with that. I love how you talked about, you know, just be- being in business on a whim. So, you know, it's like, oh, the wind's blowing through here today. I'm going to be may I have a perfect day. Like you said, you can have the best brand. You can have the best product. But if you don't truly understand your numbers, you are literally going to be lost. And then obviously most businesses don't last, you know, when they don't understand how, where they're starting from and how they can actually grow. So just, can you give my listeners just a little bit of the steps that you go through in the process that you work with, with those business owners and understanding, you know, if you had $10,000 per se, how do you make that 10,000 grow? Well, the, the, the most important thing is you can actually just pop the money in a bank account, savings account, and mm-hmm. get 0.001% of interest per year, right? But mm-hmm. that's not the point. The point is to, yes, either duplicate it, triplicate it, can exit. But the, the, only thing, the only way you're going to do it is by, first of all, th- your delivery must be supreme, as I said. The added value should be there, and whatever the expectation the client has about your product service, you have to supersede it. That's what added value is. Mm-hmm. And the, another thing would be that if you are so afraid of numbers, we actually have created or we've utilized two checking accounts, the two checking account approach for those small business owners. And it's a very simple process. Mm-hmm. You just open two business checking accounts, the first one is just for your revenue. 
No, nothing else. Just your revenue. Incoming money, deposit, revenue. Mm -hmm. The second one, it's just for your expenses. And I don't mean your expenses as your personal expenses. Right. Because you should not be commingling your personal with your business funds. There's a lot of legal repercussions about doing so. And one of the most scary ones is like, if the IRS were to audit your business mm -hmm. and you have commingled funds, guess what? They're going to audit you as well in the personal level. Wow. Mm -hmm. They're not just going to stop at your business. They're going to go after you. If you're a corporation or an LLC and you have commingled funds, I'm no attorney, but you pierce your corporate bail, meaning that you lose any legal protection that that entity would have given you. So you need to be very careful. So when I talk about expenses, it's about your business expenses. Mm -hmm. So that account should only have two deposits or two transfers from your funding revenue account to your expense account to cover those expenses. So at the end of the month, you are going to do a very simple mathematic trans uh, uh, transaction. Whatever balance you have in your revenue account minus whatever the balance is on your uh, expense account, that's your profit. That's very simple. It is very simple. And, but as simple as it is, I'm sure you have many have worked with many clientele that don't look at that as being simple, especially if they're new in the business and they're saying, hey, I don't have any money. I'm just trying to open the doors and start that. What do you say? What advice would you give that individual who's in that predicament that, that just doesn't have the additional revenue that they can that they feel they can separate the two? Well, the they don't need to open a corporation or an LLC, nor they need to start with the one. Mm -hmm. The only thing they need to do is just get two separate checking accounts from besides or totally separate apart from yours. You cannot commingle the funds or mix the funds because you're going to, you, you, your sense of success is not going to be there. If your balance at the end of the month, it's $1, that's success. I made $1. But if you don't even know that you made a dollar, you, you are just navigating it, navigating the, the oceans without any knowledge, without knowing that you made a dollar. I remember when uh, a couple of years ago, I actually delivered the news to one of our clients mm -hmm. that he had broken the million dollars revenue mark. He had no idea that he had reached or hit the, the, the seven figures mark. Mm -hmm. I can just, I just remember that day when he was like, wow, he had no idea. So that's, that's, it's not an expensive uh, thing to do. Bank, bank accounts could be almost free. There's a couple right. of banks out there that give you free checking accounts because the only thing they want is they want your money. They right. want to utilize your money as you don't use it. That's it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I agree with that. Yeah, I, I love that process because, like you said, it's very simple. And the thing that caught me when you were just talking a minute ago is the fact that you're telling people it's not important to be an LLC or a corporation or whatever you think you need to be in order to open up two accounts because you do need to have an understanding of what money is available really truly before you I would I would think before you even jump into that portion of saying hey I'm a full business right and uh, my recommendation from the get-go if you can yes let's incorporate you let's create you an LLC or let's create your corporation mm -hmm. because any good strategy and any good business starts from the ground up with a good uh, entity, with a good structure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my recommendation is approach your 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 attorney, approach your accountant, 
Okay? Don't go through those websites that offer you $99 uh, <laughs> right. registration or, or because the only thing they're doing is they are registering a piece of paper. Right. That piece of paper does not give you any protection. Everything else, the bylaws, the article, the, the minutes of organization, the operating agreement, all those legal documents, those are the ones that give you the protection. So just beware. Don't use templates. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've seen so many lawsuits being lost mm -hmm. because they've used templates that they downloaded from those websites. Right. That you have no idea. So, so it, it takes some money, some investment to, to get those legal documents. But if you're going to do it, do it right. I've seen so many cases where for savings of $500, they've lost everything. They've lost millions of dollars. Wow. Yeah, and, and I like the fact that, you know, you're trying to, you're providing great information here this evening because there are so many people who want that quick fix and not understanding that business is not about a quick fix. And I agree, if you're not going to do it right, why even bother getting into it? Because at the end of the day, you, you're not really protecting yourselves. And, you know, that's an important thing to understand because I, you know, have talked to many people who want to get into business or, you know, they're already doing business and don't even realize that, they're not protecting themselves in any way, shape or form. And they're not even in a legal business because here they're taking money or they're selling something and they're still taking money, but then they don't even have even understand that they're really running a business. And it just amazes me how many people do this every day and don't think about the, you know, precautions or don't think about the precautions they need to take for themselves, but how they can also get somebody else into trouble, you know, cause they're conducting business and um, it's no different than, you know, I'm an author as well. And I see that you're an author. It's the same process. People will get up every day and sell a book and, and don't look at that as being conducting business. And I just can't understand what people think that it's okay that you can take somebody's money and then don't think you have to pay, you know, the proper taxes or do the things that you need to do in order to qualify as being in business. So uh, it just, I'm sure you right. run into that consistently. And, you know, and even as a business owner yourself, what challenges had you faced early on um, trying to get your business, you know, up and running that you could share with the listeners this evening? Ooh, I run to multiple, multiple um, hurdles. But the first, the, the one of the biggest hurdles that I've run in my business career it's myself. I've been my worst enemy when it comes to doing business. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you why. Because most entrepreneurs at the beginning stages of us doing our business, we think that we know everything. <laughs> we think that we do not need any counsel, mm -hmm. mentors, coaches, books, Seminars, white papers, you can name it. Right. We don't need an accountant. We don't need a, we don't need a marketing company. We don't need a manager. We don't need a secretary. We don't need a human resources. We don't, and I can go on and on and on because we know and we think that we want to save money because we want to make money so we can take it to our own pocket mm -hmm. and split. What I realized is that if I was, or if I saved, let's say $10,000, it actually cost me $100,000. And it did not cost me $100,000 in cash. Mm -hmm. It actually cost me $100,000 in revenue, in lost revenue. Because if I would have focused in my product, my service, my delivery, I could have made $100,000 and paid the people that I just said those $10,000 for their services. Mm -hmm. So I would have come up $90,000 richer. Richer. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Yeah. I, I agree with that. And, and it's funny that you mentioned that, that, you know, I, I think that a, a lot of times as entrepreneurs, you're right. We, we definitely 
are our worst enemy. Uh, you know, we put ourselves first because we believe in who we are and the products and the services that we feel that we can provide. And, I, and you know, I think today's arena, when you're looking at opening a business, because things can be done so quickly that um, there's that fear as well. You know, people will use um, the excuse I've heard is, oh, well, you know, I don't want anybody else to know my ideas or I don't want to do this. or I don't. There's always something. But like you said, at the end of the day, you can't do everything. So you need to learn how to, as I, as I always call it, stay in your lane you know, of knowing, hey, you may know the business, but what else do you really know in order to become successful? And you're right. I think that many people have gone through that same process, um, but haven't really eliminated it yet in their mind and the reality Mm -hmm. that, that, hey, you know, you're spending your wheels and you're spending more time and money trying to get it done quickly instead of doing it done, doing it the right way. Just like with taxes, who in the world would ever want to deal with taxes, but that's not your arena. Why would you try to play with that? I personally don't, particularly care for the programs that they have, you know, that you could, the software you can use for your taxes. Cause it just, if it's something you don't understand, you just don't understand. Um, you know, so it's just things like that, that I believe that are a benefit for your business on top of some of the other things that you mentioned too. So when you realize that you were your worst enemy and you were your own challenge, what, what was it that truly woke you up besides the fact that you, you know, you kept spinning and spinning anything else that really hit you over the head that made you wake up to say, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. Uh, the loss of, uh, some, some, uh, investment, uh, over $2 million. And, uh, when I started, uh, as you grow older and as mm-hmm. you start letting yourself be taught, um, I realized that, if I were to continue that way, I would be losing more million of do- more millions of dollars. And actually, just getting a mentor and listening mm-hmm. to your mentor and doing what your coach, any business coach that you hire, tells you to do. You don't question them. You don't second guess them. You just do what they tell you to do. Period. You're not going to second question the doctor. You're not going to ask your cardiologist, hey, why should I take the aspirin if my neighbor that also has cardiac problems does not take an aspirin? Mm -hmm. Well, because I'm telling you, I'm your doctor. And if you don't like it, then go to and see another doctor. Right. So either you listen to advice or you seek opinions from everybody around yourself, your neighbor, your mother, your dad, your cousins, your brother, anybody, and you just take whatever suits you the best. Guess what? You're going to have a heart attack immediately in the next couple of months because you're not following the expert, the professional, the doctor. And if you want to do everything on your own, would you perform open heart surgery on yourself? I don't think so. <laughs> exactly. Period. Exactly. I don't think you I don't think you'll survive, first of all. So wearing a hundred million hats to do your business, it's it's trust me, it's the worst way of doing it. You're not saving money. You're just killing yourself. You're going to end up burned. You're gonna burn yourself. And you're just going to throw the towel and say, hell, why did I start the business in the first place? (laughs) Yeah, I agree. (laughs) I agree. Well, I'm sitting here listening and I'm thinking to myself, there's not very many people who have ever even made it to the 2 million mark, you know, and to think that it's amazing how, you know, like I said, that lump on the head that you had to take in order to get to where you had to understand that you needed to do better and you had to find somebody to help you get there. And I absolutely agree that coaching is is a, a must. I've definitely had a couple of my own. I think the biggest thing I found that with the coaching is finding the right coach um, to help the business in the way that it needs to be helped uh, to grow. And, and some of the other things, and I'm sure that there are other people who have been very decisive on that as well. So when you're talking about looking for coaches, what type of coach would you recommend uh, for a very new business that's uh, that's coming into play? Um, there's you need to be very, very, very cautious with who you hire as your coach or as coach, uh, multiple mm-hmm. coaches. Mm-hmm. Uh, ourselves, 
We have approximately five coaches for different areas. We wow. have a couple of mentors. So, and we do invest in our uh, self development every year. We actually mm-hmm. allocate a huge portion of our budget for that. Um, what you're going to do, you need to do your due diligence, meaning you need to research the coach that you're listening to. Uh, you need to do a very critical clinical, eye clinical um, research online about that individual company that is going to coach you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Another thing is you need to put the effort and the hours. Okay. But I'm going to tell you something that is very fun. We have a client. She offers mentoring and coaching to women and she empowers them to go out and, and coach, do life coaching, healing and things like that. Right. Mm-hmm. And she has a mastermind that says the, the name of it is 10 K in 30 or less in less than 90 days. Wow. So there's, there's, there's this lady who got into her program in 2018. Mm-hmm. Last week, she filed a claim with the Better Business Bureau that she did not receive the $10,000 after 90 days. Well, she never attended the program. She never opened the online system. She did the onboarding call. Mm-hmm. And on her, on her complaint, she was actually expecting the $10,000 to be deposited into her bank account after 90 days. Wow, just because she opened it up. <laughs> so you need to put in the, the work. You need right. to put the effort. You need to work on it. It's not just buying the program or attending the seminar. Mm-hmm. One, of our, one of our coaches, she says, I'm going to give you tons and tons and tons and tons of information. I'll open you my whole program before you buy it. Here. Take it, but 99% of you will never use it, apply Mm -hmm. it, read it, or go through it. I don't care. I'll give you tons of value, tons of nuggets, tons of information in this three-day seminar. You're never going to apply it. I'm not worried about it. So you you need to put the effort in it. I absolutely agree with that. And and you're right. There are millions of good programs out there and you're right. And I think obviously you want to pick the one that's right for you, but I definitely have, you know, I, and I can admit I've done that myself, you know, where you get something mm-hmm. and then you say, I'm going to utilize, utilize it and then you don't. And I've learned that that is definitely not the right way to go, but you're right. And I've obviously mm-hmm. have even sold my own programs and have done things mm-hmm. where you give people all this amazing information and, and they never mm-hmm. utilize it. But I'm like, you just paid this amount of money for this program that you say you want it, but you won't take the time to utilize it. You know, it's definitely a good right. lesson learned, but it's a shame all at the same time that you're, cause at the same time you're telling that person, Hey, I want to be in business. I want to be a successful business, but then you don't want to utilize the tools that are available because 90% of the time we, we uh, obviously live in a world of where everybody wants instant, you know, everything has to be instant and needs, you know, they want to be successful overnight. They don't want to work for it. It's all instantaneously. I want it right now. And the reality is we know as business owners, you're not going to last when you want to have that mindset because you're not willing to put the work into it. You, some people may get a little lucky, but still at the end of the day, if you're looking for long-term, that long-term really doesn't exist. But I have one more question for you. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh No, go ahead. Actually, does not exist when it comes to business. You right. might get lucky with a funnel. You might get lucky with a great marketing campaign, but it's not in your first try. That marketing campaign, that funnel, that uh, product has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of failures, of uh, unsuccessful uh, launches, uh, hundreds of no sleeping, mm-hmm. uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars may be invested. But I don't, I actually, in my 24 years of experience and doing accounting and coaching and mm-hmm. business consulting, sorry, 
Mm-hmm. I've actually never seen one individual, even with tons of money inherited, have luck that way in their first try. Mm-hmm. They've always had something that they came from and then, okay, then this is, I'm going to perfect this. I'm going to move this. Mm-hmm. That, that's how it works. Right. That's the right way. Tears, sweat. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Tears, sweat, divorces, maybe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, for, for doing it the wrong way. Yeah, I can see that happening on many occasions, I'm sure. So, right. but I want, I wanted to ask you that, you know, with the things going on today, you know, we're obviously a lot of small businesses and just business in general hurting because of the COVID-19 and people not able to run their businesses the way that they normally would. I'm sure you've run into that and and have probably assisted some people throughout these last several months because of it. So what would you give advice to someone today who may be going through that process of not being able to work? You know, how do you, what would you tell them to better prepare themselves maybe in the future? Um, If if you're an employee and you're not able to work, uh, I would highly suggest that you look into a hobby that you have and convert it into a business. There's hundreds of things that you can do from home that do not require capital, that they only require a little bit of thinking outside the box. And if you're a business owner, think outside the box. Think on how you're going to move forward with a new normal, so you need to adjust your business model. If you have not done so, you're late. You need to readjust your business model. You need to readjust your buyer persona. And if you do not know what a buyer persona is, then go find a job. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, tell us how you really feel. <laughs> um, because one of the biggest problems that we as entrepreneurs have is mm-hmm. that we aim to the universe. If I am selling pens, the only people that are going to buy me a pen is whomever needs it, mm-hmm. not the whole world. Right. That's right. So who needs a pen? That's where I need to start from. Who needs a pen? And if my marketing and if my messaging is to the universe, I'm losing energy. I'm losing focus. Mm-hmm. So we need to focus. We need to refocus. We need to think as entrepreneurs, as clients, not as to what moves me as an entrepreneur. We need to think as how the client reacts, what the client wants. We are not the clients. We're That's pushing right. that pen to the client. But what's my cli- what does my client want? What do they need? It's not what I need. It's not what I want. It's what my client needs and wants. So we need to think like that. So nowadays, in this new normal, what do they need? What do they want? Diversify. If I sell windows, start selling shades, film, uh, cleaning supplies for the windows. Diversify. Mm -hmm. And if you have not done so, you're losing a lot of opportunities. Absolutely. I love it. Oh, you definitely have provided us with some amazing information tonight. And I'm hoping that the listeners are truly hearing what Fidel just said, because it's just great that somebody can come on and share this type of information. You know, I, I love it when I have my guests come on and they provide these wonderful resources. But like you said earlier, and as we talked that it's, it's taking it all in and actually truly utilizing what is being you know, fed to you guys tonight, because this is exactly a meal. You got a whole platter of great information tonight from Fidel. And Fidel, I'm just excited that you were able to come on with us. But before I have to let you go, could you please let the listeners know how they can reach out to you and um, if they need your assistance with other businesses? Yes, most definitely. Uh, They can reach us at 619-677-6512. Or they can uh, visit our website, Invictus-Advisors.com. 
All right. Well, you guys heard it live. Um, Videl, thank you again. I'm so excited that you got the opportunity to be on my show. And for everyone else, I'm telling you, if you missed out on the live this evening, just you're more than welcome to go back and listen to the replay. The This show was on 11 different platforms, so there's no reason why you can't hear this again. Yeah, I'm telling you, you've just missed out on some wonderful information, but please go back and listen to the replay, become a follower, share the information because uh, Mr. Espinosa just gave us great information this evening. And again, sir, I really appreciate having you on my show this evening. I thank you so much for your time. Kimberly, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot. You're very welcome. And for everyone else, as you know, we are here every Thursday evening at 7 p.m. on the show. We'll have a new guest again next week. But until then, you all have a wonderful evening and good night. Good night, everyone. We will be back next Thursday evening at 7 p.m. Follow us on Spreaker, www.spreaker.com slash user slash WSBI. View our new WSBI website anytime at www.wsbillc.com and on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Instagram. 